The Chesapeake Bay is the largest estuary in the world. It is home to over 17 million people who play, work, and live on the watershed. The bay is home to 3,600 species of plants, fish, and animals. The watershed is 64,000 square miles that starts in New York and ends in Virginia. The watershed starts as far north as New York and runs through six states and the District of Columbia on its way to the ocean. We all have an impact on the already poor health of the bay. After record lows in the Chesapeake Bay health in the 1970s, the formation of environmental organizations greatly improved the health of the Chesapeake Bay by creating a demand for restoration and protection. Captain John Smith once said, Heaven and Earth never agreed better to frame a place for man's habitation. This was said because back in the 1600s, the Chesapeake Bay was covered with fertile land, abundant wildlife, and many different variety of trees. Since colonial times, the bay has lost half of its forested shorelines, over half of its wetlands, nearly 90% of its underwater grasses, and more than 98% of its oysters. This was mainly due to the people using the bay's natural resources, erosion, pollution, overharvesting, using dredges, and population growth. The first time the bay's poor health was brought into the public's attention was in 1973 after a tour of the Chesapeake Bay shoreline for the U.S. Senator Charles Mathias. After seeing firsthand how polluted the bay was, this inspired the U.S. Senator Charles Mathias to sponsor legislation that prompted the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency to conduct a study on the Chesapeake Bay's health. Not only was the bay's poor health brought to the public's attention, but it was also brought to the government's attention and a group of fishermen in Maryland. The fishermen wanted to help protect the bay and founded the Chesapeake Bay Foundation as a solution to help restore the bay. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation was formed by a group of largely initially Baltimore businessmen in the early 1960s because they saw the bay getting more and more crowded. Uh, they saw fish kills. They saw a lot of pollution in Baltimore's inner harbor. Uh, they got started to be worried about the direction that the whole thing was going in. The government created two groups just for the Chesapeake Bay as a solution for the Bay's poor health. Their names were the Chesapeake Bay Program and the Chesapeake Bay Commission. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation was founded in 1967 by Arthur Sherwood and the largest nonprofit environmental conservation organization dedicated to restore and protect the Chesapeake Bay. Over the last 40 years, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation has created broad understanding of the Chesapeake Bay's poor health. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation fights for effective science-based solution to the pollution harming the Chesapeake Bay and its rivers and streams. In 1976, Chesapeake Bay Foundation had raised public concern over the future of the bay high enough that Senator Charles Mathias, a member of the Chesapeake Bay Foundation's Board of Trustees, was able to push through Congress a seven-year EPA Chesapeake Bay study. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation helped underwater grasses return to the Potomac around Washington and to a number of other areas from which they had disappeared. Straight bass rebounded strongly from a fishing ban of the late 1980s. This was a result because of the Chesapeake Bay Agreement and the Chesapeake Bay Foundation. In 1983, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation had a major role in the forming of the first Chesapeake Bay Agreement. In 1990, emphasis began to shift to nine-point sources, which is runoff pollution from urban areas, suburbs, and farms. Today, the Chesapeake Bay Foundation creates the State of the Bay Report every two years and is based on the best available information about the Chesapeake Bay for indicators representing three major categories. Pollution, habitat, and fisheries. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation currently has offices in Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania, and the District of Columbia. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation also has 15 field centers. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation's motto is Save the Bay. You can see the stickers on the back of cars all around Maryland and Virginia. The Chesapeake Bay Program was founded in 1983. Their vision was to have an economically sustainable Chesapeake Bay watershed with clean water, abundant life, and citizen involvement. The Chesapeake Bay Program helped fund the major study, A Framework for Action, published in 1983. 
This was a huge study and helped establish what the Chesapeake Bay organizations needed to fix to have a healthy bay. The study started in 1976 and took seven years to complete. This study marked the first time that the bay was ever studied. The framework for action was also the reason behind the first Chesapeake Bay Agreement that the Chesapeake Bay Program, Environmental Protection Agency, and the Chesapeake Bay Commission all contributed to in 1983. For more than 30 years, the Chesapeake Bay Agreement has become recognized as one of the nation's premier water restoration efforts. The 1987 Chesapeake Bay Agreement set the first ever goals, including number goals, to reduce pollution in the Chesapeake Bay. Among other goals, the 1987 Chesapeake Bay Agreement aimed to reduce nitrogen and phosphorus entering the bay mainly by wastewater treatment plants and agriculture by 40% by the year 2000. The Chesapeake Bay Commission is a tri-state legislative commission created in 1980. The commission serves as the legislative arm of the multi-jurisdictional Chesapeake Bay program. Fifteen of the members are legislators, five each from Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania, and cabinet secretaries from each state who are directly responsible for managing their state's natural resources. There are also three representatives from each state. The Chesapeake Bay Commission advises the members of the General Assemblies of Maryland, Virginia, and Pennsylvania on matters of baywide concerns. The Chesapeake Bay Commission has passed numerous laws reducing nitrogen and phosphorus. Since our inception, uh, like I said, our, our legislators have worked together to pass uh, complementary legislation in all three states. One of the big ones, one of the biggest reductions in phosphorus in the bay was due to um, detergent, uh, phosphate detergent bans. Since 1983, the Chesapeake Bay Commission has helped conduct the work of the Chesapeake Bay Program. In 1983, the Commission helped conduct the first Chesapeake Bay Agreement. The Commission state delegates have worked to protect natural resources. In 1994, the Commission adopted a resolution to maintain and restore repairing forests. This kicked off a major initiative to develop a watershed-wide bay program policy on the restoration of repairing forest buffers. In 1997, the Commission focused attention on the restoration of submerged aquatic vegetation. The Commission organized the effort of the Chesapeake 2000 Agreement. In conclusion, the Chesapeake Bay watershed pollution comes from water sewage, agriculture, and also 17 million people who live in the watershed. The comprehensive restoration plan, such as the ones pursued by the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, Chesapeake Bay Program, and Chesapeake Bay Commission have greatly improved the health of the Chesapeake Bay by creating a demand for restoration and protection. How long have you worked with the Chesapeake Bay Foundation? Uh, I've worked with the Bay Foundation for 16 years. And have you ever noticed like uh, changes in the water? Yeah, it's 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 slow, but we see progress. Uh, the report card keeps going in an upward direction. We do a report card every two years, and it's it's a slow increase, but we see improvement. Uh, and actually here in Baltimore Harbor, uh, we're seeing some anecdotal evidence of improvement. And in fact, I was at a fishing tournament last night and they were pulling out 27 inch rockfish right out of here. Uh, so we're seeing uh, life in the bay, our oysters are growing, uh, there's jellyfish in the bay, there's uh, uh, osprey that are coming back, menhaden, uh, all kinds of good signs. The Chesapeake Bay Foundation, Chesapeake Bay Program, and the Chesapeake Bay Commission also have been working to restore oyster reefs, wetlands, forest, wildlife, and underwater plants. A special thanks to the Chesapeake Bay Foundation, the Chesapeake Bay Program, the Chesapeake Bay Commission, John Page Williams, Bevan Ann Buchheister, and Terry Cummings.